Morning YouTube. A lot of folks get into ham radio and their first radio is a little handheld because you know you can pick up a Baofeng for 20 or 30 bucks but they quickly realize that they want to grow into getting a mobile radio. Well today we're going to take a look at an inexpensive mobile radio. It's the Anytone 778. Um, it's a dual band radio. We're going to unbox that bad boy and I'm going to show you how to set it up. So I got that cup of joe. Let's get our ham radio game on and let's go. Okay, so here it is. It's the Anytone 778 UV. UV just means it's a UHF VHF radio. Got the frequencies, uh, the frequency ranges there 136, 174, 400 to 490. Obviously, that's bigger than the amateur band is, so make sure you don't transmit out of there. And when you open that sucker up, we have the radio. And this is actually the second one of these that I have. I have another one installed here in the shack. There's a microphone, a little mounting hardware, and the power cord. Okay. Um, I'm not going to actually run this power cord because, like I said, I have another one set up in the shack. And this is actually going to go into my vehicle to replace an existing 2 meter radio that's in there. So, but just know it comes with it. Um, these are normally like. 10 or 15 feet long. We'll we'll measure that out and see how long that is here in a minute. And you've got the mounting bracket to mount that. I got all the plastic off. Um, microphone just plugs in right there. It's the regular old RJ45 plug. Um, I'll just go ahead and tell you, there's a lot of hate out there for these Chinese radios. And, you know, back in the day, a lot of the quality was questionable. But, you know, I've got... Like I said, this is my second one of these. I've got several of the little Chinese made handhelds. And I mean it's I've I've found their high quality radios from what I've got. I mean I'm sure you can get some that aren't, but you know, you stick with some of the bigger brands of Chinese radios and I think you'll be okay. Um Alright, so here's what we got. You got the radio just to give you an idea of size. You know, it's well, it's about the size of my hand. My hand might be slightly bigger than some, but it's not terribly big. It's got a small footprint. The microphone is roughly half the size of the radio. It's got, you know, DTMF stuff on or buttons on the front, an AB switch, and some other stuff on there. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing plugged up. As far as plugs, you've got your plug for your PL259 SO239 connector and your fused power line. Okay. Um, this power line for folks that are relatively new to radio. Okay. This is just going to run either to your car battery or fuse block or to a power supply in your shack. Okay. So it comes with the cord that adapts to it and has bare wire on the end of it. You know, you can get power poles to stick on the end to plug it in, Anderson power poles or whatever, but you don't need to have those things. You know, getting into ham radio, you don't have to spend a fortune to get those first radios. Um, there's no doubt it can become an expensive hobby, but it's only as expensive as you want it to be. So keep that in mind. You don't have to go break the bank to get a mobile radio. Okay, this is the radio that I already have here in the shack, and this is the one we're about to install. So, actually, I'm not going to install, but hook up and program. So, I'm going to shut that off. And you'll see back here is just the power connector. And then I've got the antenna line coming in the back. So, give me a second. I'm going to unhook that, and we're going to hook that up to the new radio. All right, and so here's the connector and the antenna line there. Kind of have to pull it funny because... Well, I don't have a whole bunch of slack there, but that'll be all right. Okay, so first I'm going to go ahead and install the antenna. It's really dark in here. apologize for that. And just 
screw that down so that you get a good seat in there. Make sure you hook an antenna up to it, guys. Do not transmit a radio, especially, okay, y'all newer folks, okay, the temptation is going to be real to plug that bad boy in. Oops, look at that. Here it comes. Okay, and you're going to want to key it up to make sure it works. Don't do it until you have a load on the antenna. Okay, so that's in there. Power line's on. You can see it's turned on. And the microphone is plugged straight in. Now, we're actually going to unplug that microphone because we're going to program it. Okay, but that's how it should look when you boot up. It's got a nice color display. You can see it's getting 13.8 volts. It's coming straight out of... I think that trip light power supply right there. And it's got the sub band, which is on the 400 megahertz, 70 centimeter band. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug that and let me get it set up to program and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so it comes with, and I forgot to show you this, it, and this is actually off of my other one because I've got it labeled. Um, go ahead and give you that little tip now. You're gonna end up with a bunch of different programming cables. I just take a little label maker. You can use masking tape or something and stick a label for what programs what because while a lot of them look the same they are not the same okay so i just labeled it up i'm just using the one that i already have labeled so um, one end goes into the usb the other end goes into the microphone port turn that around sorry about like i said it's a little tight in here because of not having slack and you can hear that audible click and now it's plugged in there the software for this I'll show you how to get okay so go to anytone.net um, don't google it you'll end up somewhere else that won't have the software just anytone.net go to the resource or the service and support then the download center scroll down till you find the radio it's the anytone 778 click it let it install depending on your network speed it doesn't really take very long um, you will need some kind of unarchiving software to be able to unzip it. I use WinRAR for myself, but whatever floats your boat, PKZip or whatever. Um, what I'm actually going to do is open my copy of it. I don't want to install another copy of it. Um, ignore that website that shows up on there. It leads to some no longer available website. Um, and this is what it looks like when you open the software. This is just the blank data file that you're going to have. You just double click it a channel spot and you can set your transmit and your receive frequencies um, so that you can manually set your repeater offsets and whatnot. Make sure you do the math right. Um, remember usually 600 kilohertz for 2 meters and 5 megahertz for 70 centimeters. Um, you can actually program or name the channel using letters to display on your radio itself you get like five digits or five letters there. Just click in there and type and creatively abbreviate. For example, this is going to be Ox VHF because this is the VHF machine in Oxford, or going to be. Um, you go ahead and set your CTCSS tone. Remember the difference between an encode and a decode. Okay, you want to set the CTCSS encode not the decode. The decode is what that's going to do is require the repeater to send you a certain tone to open the squelch for you to hear it and if you set the wrong one you won't even know it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up the file that I already have for that other radio that's right up there and this is how it's set up right now and what I want to do is I actually want to program both of my radios to be the same. So I'm just going to use this file um, a lot of times these Chinese radios, you have to go in and tell it, hey, set the COM port to be this. You can find that in your device manager if you don't know what COM port it is. I happen to know mine's on COM3. So hit set, set COM port, and then boom, hit it there, and it's set. Then you're going to hit program and write to radio. And it's going to warn us, hey, do you want to do this? Yes, yes I do. So click OK and it starts to roll and I'm going to show you what that looks like on the radio right here and you can see it's writing the software now or writing the channels and you can 
can see on this screen. It's 58%. Still writing it there. Um, kind of like the Baofeng radios. A nice thing about this is when you buy several radios that are all the same model and everything, even if it's not chirpable, it doesn't work with chirp. You have to have their software. It's still nice. You can deploy these things in several different places. You can see, boom, there it goes. It booted up. Um, you can deploy them in several different places, and all you have to do at that point is, like I just did, open your data file, plug it in, flash it, and you're off and running. So you can see this one is now programmed exactly like the other one, which is now turned off up there, but it is now programmed exactly like that one. Okay, um, there are a couple other things you can set in there, and you want to do this before you write it, but it's no big deal to write it again. I just forgot to show you. Um, you can hit here for function setup, and you can change all kinds of different functions in here. You can change the little message that it says when it boots up, like mine says my call sign, K5ATA. Um, you can set, you know, the volume that it starts up at and whatnot. Poke through here and customize this radio to be good for you. Um, next thing you can do is you can program what the buttons on the radio actually do. They're not the most intuitively laid out buttons in the world, the way they come defaulted. So customize those, like, you know, for power or whatever. And you can set those, and then you just write the, those settings to the radio, and boom, there they are. So that's how you record those. Um, and then you just go set it up in the truck or in the shack or wherever you want it. So... That is basically how you program the Anytone 70, or 778UV. Um, like I said, it's a great little dual band radio. You've got a great color screen on it. It's got, you know, some basic settings on that you can do to switch, you know, between that to adjust your squelch. Hit that button. And you can see at the bottom it says, you know, squelch 3. You just turn the little knob and see it's squelch 4 and then hit it when you're done. Um, to switch between your main and your sub band is just that P1 button. And one of them is the power button in there. Oh, volume. You definitely want to know the volume. So click volume, turn it up and down. This thing does get pretty stinking loud. And I run mine through a Motorola external speaker. So, but hit that. You can turn off the sub band if you want to. But that is basically how you program that thing. So um, we appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Any questions or anything, comment below. Hit like, hit subscribe. It does help out the channel a good bit. And that's it. Y'all take care.